The name's Miles, Daniel Miles, and this is my retro dunking of the top 10 films of 2015. Okay, so caveats, guys. These are films that I have seen. I did not see every film that came out in 2015, so the films I saw, these are my top 10 favourites. So let's break it down. The Lobster. Okay, so I gave this film an If Nothing Else and I reviewed it, but can I tell you a secret, guys? I forget every single film I review as soon as I click publish. Once it's uploaded, I move on to next week. The Lobster, ever since I've seen it, I have not been able to get this film out of my head, and the more I think about it, the more I realise I might have gotten my review a bit wrong. The people talked stupidly and banality because that's how we talk these days. We pressurise people that are single into relationships. It really isn't that much of a stretch to imagine this kind of world. I'm thinking about it, demanding an explanation of how people turn into animals, that's like asking how the hyperdrive works in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It just does. It is actually really well acted. It is actually really well shot. I do still think the soundtrack was a little bit out, but thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it, yeah. Definitely number 10, arguably the most bizarre satire, and I wouldn't blame you if you clicked it off halfway through. I really wouldn't, but if you stick with it, it's a rewarding, engaging experience. Number 10. Big Hero 6. All right, now I saw this in the cinema and I absolutely loved it. I was in an auditorium stuffed full of little kids. Normally, my worst nightmare, I'm stuck in an auditorium with loads and loads and loads of horrible little kids. Not one peep out of any of them. Not one fidget. Nothing. We were all absolutely spellbound. I love the characters, I love the animation, I love the world. Baymax is a huge hit. There was even a little onion cutting ninja lurking around. Arguably one of the best kids films of the year. It's not the last kids film on this list, but it's definitely one of the best. Everest. All right, now I didn't actually get my review of Everest up, and I'm really sorry about that. I was having some technical difficulties at the time. But Everest is an awesome film showing people doing what people do. Why climb Everest? One of the first guys to do it was asked. Why climb Everest? He turned around and responded, because it's there. And I think that that sums up this film, because it's there. These people, they're doing it for all different reasons. And yeah, it would have been nice if the women had been more than keep calm and carry on posters. But there was just this feeling throughout the film of the mountain just not giving a stuff about these specks crawling up its back. There was a sense throughout that even if everything had gone perfect, even if the weather hadn't kicked off, things would still have gone wrong. It's an amazing film, an amazing cast. I'm sure it's going to be overlooked come Oscar time, but it's really, really worth checking out, especially if you're into mountaineering or climbing, or you've read the book. It's an amazing adaptation. I really do recommend this one. Star Wars The Force Awakens. All right, so I went into this one with kind of mixed feelings. J.J. Abrams can do some pretty good stuff, but for me, he kind of tends to leave a few too many plot holes, and Star Wars hasn't made a good film in 30 years. So I went into this, and I spent the entire film just, just grinning like a nine-year-old boy. It was the Star Wars film I've always wanted, the Star Wars film that I just couldn't imagine seeing. Everything was perfect except for Kylo Ren. And I've seen people try and defend him in forums, and online and no I'm sorry swapping out Darth Vader with an emo teenager just doesn't work I've done a normal review I've done a spoiler review and I think I've said all I want to say on this other than it's only at number seven because it is just a retread of a new hope and I do think that they've sort of cleared the decks now and numbers eight and nine they're gonna really go for making this trilogy different from the original trilogy at least I hope they are Inside Out. Okay, so this was Pixar's masterpiece. Pixar's had a few quality issues the last few years, but Inside Out was absolutely incredible. They're actually using this film to help autistic people kind of get in touch with their emotions. They're using it with people who have difficulty adapting to the real world. 
they're using it to help people and I think that's the best thing that you can ask of any film, especially one like Inside Out. Brilliantly drawn characters, a brilliantly realised world, absolutely amazing. You come out and think, I wonder what the voices in my head are saying. I wonder what it looks like in there. I love the voice acting and I absolutely think this was one of the top films of the summer. And if you haven't seen it yet, the voices in my head are telling me to tell the voices in your head, go and see this. Sean the Sheep. Alright guys, last kids film, I absolutely promise. It's not my fault this has been an absolutely cracking year for kids films. Okay, Sean the Sheep, it's, it's Play-Doh, it's Claymation. A second of footage on a film has 24 frames. Which means for Aardman, every time they want to make one second of animation, they have to move all the little clay models ever so slightly. It's essentially 24 still photographs for every second of footage. It takes them years to make a film. Absolutely years. As far as I'm concerned, an Aardman film that's worth waiting for. Especially this film. It's a dialogue-free film. And I went into it sort of thinking, oh, it's based on five-minute shorts. It's going to feel stretched and padded. And it's not going to be as good as Wallace and Gromit, Curse the Were Rabbit. And I was right. It's better. I didn't stop laughing all the way through. I didn't stop chuckling. I've watched it again and again and again, and I still see new things every single time. If you've got young kids, like six and below, or you're a big kid yourself, seriously, check this out. It shows you how amazing film can be without dialogue. Something we forget these days. It's an amazing film. I seriously, seriously recommend it to you guys. It is the last kids film on the list, I do promise, but I've saved the best till last. Shaun the Sheep the movie is amazing, and if it doesn't win Best Animated, no justice in the world. Birdman. Or the other title. Okay, so I saw this on January 1st. It was released in 2014 in America, but it came out here New Year's Day 2015. It was the first film I saw all year. I was actually supposed to go and see the Woman in Black sequel, but I missed that, and we went and saw this, and my God, I, I had no idea what I was expecting from this film. And my mate took me to go and see it, and it's incredible. Incredibly well acted, incredibly well shot and staged, and the way it feels like one continuous shot. It's not actually one continuous shot, but it's edited to look that way. And about halfway through, I started feeling like I was in a dream, like I was floating away and it just felt like something else. This is what film is about. It's, it was a low budget film and the director sent everyone pictures of Man on Wire and said, look guys, this is this film. And if we don't pull it off, and it was the easiest thing in the world not to pull it off, then we're all gonna fall. And every single actor pulled it off. There was no weak link in this film. First film of the year, such a good film to start the year off with. Such a good film. Absolutely love it. Watched it again, still loved it. If you're interested, guys, there were, I know of at least two other films that were actually shot in this style. You've got Alfred Hitchcock's Rope, which is shot with four cuts in it, purely because Hitchcock ran out of film. That's a good one to catch. And there was a Russian one called The Ark, which is only about 80 minutes long, but that is literally a one-take film. That entire film, I think it's about 80 minutes, if you get a chance, it's just one take. And it's well worth a look for the spectacle and just for the sheer guts to try it, if nothing else. Turbo Kid. Okay, so again, a lower budget film, but my God, did I absolutely love this film. Imagine Mad Max Fury Road on a budget of, shall we say, 500 quid, shot in Doctor Who's abandoned gravel quarry, and everyone's got a ton of tomato ketchup with them. Seriously guys, this film, it's just fun. It was a retro punk feel to it, and it was just a, a good fun film, and I absolutely loved it. Um, I must have loved it, it's at number three, but it, 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 seriously guys, if you like Mad Max, you will love this. Turbo Kid is amazing. Bridge of Spies. Alright guys, so as far as I'm concerned, Steven Spielberg hasn't made a good film in at least 20 years. I'd, I'd given up on him. I know that's sacrilege, greatest director ever, but I'd given up on him. He hasn't made a good film since Saving Private Ryan. And I went into this film, uh, my god. Spy films are kind of one of my pet genres. I love a good spy film. And I loved this film. The pacing was amazing. The set was amazing. Tom Hanks was amazing. All the characters were amazing. Based on a true story that they didn't screw up. 
At one point, Tom Hanks said, my character had a cold, so can I have a cold? I looked this up, because I was still annoyed that everyone in the film had a cold. And I looked at um, Tom Hanks said, my character had a cold, so can I have a cold? And Spielberg went, yes, you have a cold now. That's how detailed and authentic they went on this film, and it showed. And it's the kind of story that we don't hear too often these days anymore. And my God, more of this, please, Spielberg. You even made Tom Hanks seem like less of a Boy Scout than he usually is. More of this, please, and less of your sugar-filled pack. Mad Max Fury Road. What a film! What a wonderful film! In a summer of 12A pap CGI covered nonsense, one film made by a granddad just went, uh, no. This is how you make your summer blockbuster. It was bright, it was colourful, it had stunts and explosions and the characters and everything. And I walked out of that film, my heart was going. My local cinema's got this sort of really big screen, and I spent the entire film like this. Just absolutely the images and the sound and it just kept going and going and going. It's not got the strongest storyline in the world. It's not got the most characterization, but it but it sets its world and it lets you fill in the blanks. You are given the barest bones of what these characters were and what they did and how they came to be who they are, and you were expected to make it up for yourself. And it was amazing. Actual physical stunts, minimal CGI on this film. The director just turned around and went, what's a CGI? The studios, the studios watched the movie, they gave the director more money and said, make more. They literally told him to put in more craziness, more cars, more stunts. This isn't just one of the most defining films of this decade, it's one of the most defining films of almost any decade. This is an amazing film and you guys, if you haven't seen it yet, what are you doing? Go and watch Mad Max Fury Road. I'm Daniel, this is a Retro Dunk, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe.